I'm going to be introducing uh, Yael Messel, uh, who is an independent curator. Uh, she's uh, the artistic director of the uh, 48 millimeter uh, film festival at Zuchot and a fellow curator at the Institute for Public uh, Presence. Messel holds a, a postgraduate degree in curating from Goldsmith uh, College in London and had participated in the Apple curatorial program in Amsterdam. Uh, she has been collaborating with uh, museums, institutions, and independent art spaces around the world, including uh, the Satellite Museum, Van Abbe Museum, Apex Art, uh, Matadero Art Center, uh, the CCA in Warsaw, Artport Tel Aviv, and the 13th in uh, Istanbul Biennial. Hello. Um, okay, well, it seems like I have a lot of stuff, but it's going to be actually a short one. Um, thanks, Leah, Avi, and Lama for inviting me to take part in this really inspiring uh, project and conference. Um, wait, I have an order here which I need, and then I can start. Um, so I would like to bring into discussion a few more scenarios that are imagining the future of this land. And this artwork made by Israeli artists, uh, Michael Bloom, Yael Bartana, and Talia Hoffman, and that are using the tool of political imagination, proposing very different future, uh, some more dystopian than others. And maybe it's also relating to, I think, the first question that can be asked, like in terms of it's kind of aesthetic gestures or kind of reconsideration of the, the place that we live in and, the, of course, the condition that we live here. And this idea of uh, utopia and dystopia, and maybe Jabali said about how uh, Zionism is a, a futuristic movement, but definitely uh, utopian and dystopian is something to do with uh, Zionist, Israeli, Jewish, uh, and all of that. If we're talking about uh, maybe in literature, uh, well, of course, Alt Neuland, and later on, uh, dystopian Israeli novels such as The Road to Encharod by Amos Keinan, and Hindromania by Asaf Gavron, among many others. And, and I think what I well, sense uh, this um, invitation, and I think I'm pushing something that I don't want to, um, uh, the invitation to talk, I wanted to think and to look at kind of a dystopian from the contemporary uh, point of art point of view. And I'm gonna start with this project by uh, Michael Bloom. Uh, he's, uh, he was born in Jerusalem and he's based nowadays in Montreal. He's been based, I think, also in Vienna. And he's been working with films, um, mixed media installation, and in different places around the world. And this project, which I'd like to begin with this one, um, it's an installation uh, that he first did in the Van Abbe Museum in 2008. And installation, as you can see, is comprised of different uh, materials and objects. And in this one, he's, he's, in this setting, uh, Bloom has created a fictional world in which the United States has withdrawn support from, for Israel. And the Palestinian population um, tripled its uh, size and it forced Israel to evacuate. So several dozen uh, of Israeli refugees have found sanctuary in various public buildings in Holland, in the US, and other places around the world. So according to Bloom, uh, 4,500 4, um, Israeli refugees are being accommodating in different public buildings in the Netherlands. So actually, like the Van Abbe Museum in Holland is presuming, according to, I need a microphone, to Bloom, um, to in blue my vision, so they like kind of was the place where the refugees, the Israeli refugees, uh, went. And maybe I um, want to use this one. Yes, it's a good idea because I'm more nervous than a Um So I just wanted to say something before I'm going in even further to this work is the work that we will see today as, and I think that often art does, are creating ambiguous and political uh, position. Um, and at the same time, I'm talking to the microphone, right? And at the same time, um, I do think that this project are dealing with core issues as refugeehood, homeland, and return in a, and return in a thought-provoking way, also maybe in a kind of maybe some annoying way, um, which is something to talk about, I hope, together. 
So I just wanted kind of to bring those scenarios and then we can think uh, together, hopefully, how we can um, reconsider them. Because, of course, Michael Bloom, so he's creating this fictional hypothetical setting. And he's okay. So we're talking about Exodus 48 to 2048. First, also referring to the sheep uh, of um, a Holocaust survivor of 47, the famous Exodus that became also part of a, a like a very canonical uh, Zionist event, and that there were later on, like they came uh, in 47, uh, during the uh, English, uh, the British mandate in Palestine, and they were deported to West Germany, and later in 48 there did as other settlers uh, settled in, uh, in Palestine. Um, at the same time, of course, we're talking about 48, so although we are talking about uh, Israeli refugees, obviously Bloom is echoing the Nakba and is, is echoing uh, what happened in 48 when Israel was established and what happened uh, to, to Palestine and to Palestinians within Palestine and then they were ha had to be expelled. Um, because of that uh, on Nakba that is, as we all know, still going on uh, today. Um, and I was very inspired by the um, uh, writing and practice of uh, decolonizing archi architecture art residency, and specifically this book, Exhibit A, uh, Architecture After Revolution. And and in this book, and specifically, I want to read you some of their thoughts that for me were very inspiring for this project, but also very much like in working at Zuchot. Um, so I'm just going to read a bit. Um, Since the Nakba, starting in 47, the condition of Palestinian refugees has been defined by two limiting concepts, extraterritoriality, as committed as we are to the full implementation of the right of return, we do, not we do not believe that return can offer a solution to the condition of refugeeness by simply reversing the trajectory of time for much more traject much more radical kind of transformation. Rather than marginalizing refugees as a residual issue in, a conter in contemporary politics, we think they must be put in the center of any political vision for radical change in our region. And as those of you who know, um, uh, architecture dar uh, of course the project are like very inspiring in terms of the architectural uh, very in-depth research uh, on field on on either destroy villages on refugees camp kind of rethinking how architecture can um, can can be uh, put together in, in to, to kind of promote those uh, new ideas so I'm kind of borrowing these uh, ideas and kind of thinking how and if we can look at those works, uh, from their point of view. And as I said, like it's, of course, as, like, like the idea is to evoke and the idea is kind of to put in the surface subjects that are not necessarily um, being discussed, specifically within Israeli uh, Jewish discourse. Uh, so this work is both a vision of the future to come and an image of the past capturing um, um, Asian emotions and fears that are still relevant in local reality. And another, I would want to show you some stuff because I didn't show you the images. So as you can see, it's like, it's kind of super chaotic. So you see glimpse of, of like uh, how this uh, refugee uh, camp is being um, made with a lot of Barbies. I don't know why, I think it has a thing with Barbies. <laughs> the story was also being told, I don't know. Yeah, you can read it, they're being told in few uh, stories, like um, uh, on the wall. So you kind of, you enter, you see the, the stories and kind of you enter this very fictional, hypothetical uh, setting. Um, yeah, those are, uh, Moses was here, uh, 15 of May, 2048. <laughs> now I will move to another work. Bloom is kind of, um, kind of irritating and kind of bringing to the surface this notion of refugeehood. Um, so the next work, which I think, well, I have a, yeah, this one. Um, the second work, which I think most of you know, uh, which, so I won't show a clip, but I will just say. Um, so following Bloom, um, so the, the very known uh, artwork, uh, the trilogy of Yael Bartana and Europe Will We Stand, um, from that, I will, I will focus on the first part of the series, uh, which is, I th also think, actually, personally, that it's the most powerful one, um, which is uh, Mar Marie Kushmeri, Nightmares, from 2007. It's a film, 
I think I can see a bit of the stuff. Taking place in Poland. And where this uh, young activist passionately invites Jews to come back to Poland. Um, so a lot have been written, ab written about this uh, trilogy and about this work. And I think the, the, for me, the most interesting aspect that I uh, found about it is that it's, yes, it's a call for the return of the Jewish and the, to welcome Jews to imagine kind of a Polish rec recognition. But at the same time, it, it evoked the ghost that seemed no, not less imaginable, and it's the call to the to return of the Palestinians. And I, I'm going to read something, also, and, I'm, and also in a very interesting article by uh, Gisha Mitt uh, about this work, when suffering become identity on the moment of catastrophe and the contours of hope. Um, G, G, um, Amit is writing how the specter of return of the Palestinian refugee hover over this work. Uh, the absent constitute its condition, charged with debt, waiting to be settled. Not the right to return, of return, but the return itself. Infiltra infiltrates the discourse of the present be and becoming part of it. And yes, we saw that. So again, like as you can see, those speculations are, are kind, of, kind of reshuffling ideas reshuffling the concept. And another uh, and dystopian uh, speculation is the work by uh, Talia Hoffman. I'm going to mention this work, which I hope, sh I think she will talk about later, uh, that this work is part of a larger project called uh, the Guyava Project. And this is a film and that we're going to see five minutes of it. And it's uh, depicting 24 hours um, where people are kind of in the middle of the, how do you say, Emekaila? Yeah, but there is another. Uh, anyway, Ella Valley. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. And um, when we see a truck and we see people uh, with their belonging just come and kind of join the truck. We don't know where they're coming from. We don't know where we're going. They are going. We also don't know where we are going. Um, and we're going to see a clip of it right now. I'm very good in those things, always. I'm known at those stuff.
معلش بس اعملوا محل الشباب هون بكشان تعطوا لهم مكان ما نادر معلش خليت حتى هلا شنافير معلش توسط اعمل غاد بس So and so the film uh, is is continue like that. Like the sun is going down, more people are coming. It's like in a way nothing is happening beside the fact that uh, more and more people are joining the track, which is not moving. Um, and not like the previous example, how this film take pl take place here, and there is not a narrative that has been told to us. Uh, we don't know what happened, we don't know uh, to whom they're waiting for, where they're coming for. Of course, there, as you can sense, this sense of kind of, uh, there is something very disturbing, um, what's supposed to happen. So, um, Talia, because she's here, so I don't need to say her last name. Talia is creating a situation of the day after, which is a constant temporariness. And this reshuffling of the situation, of, of creating a moment that's supposed of reorganization of, of property and territory, um, it's also tapping to what this idea of kind of um, the process of what I think we can uh, take from um, those uh, aesthetic gestures and hopefully in other, of course, works in the political imagi imagination. And that's the process that we need of, of decolonization. And according to Dar, um, decolonization is the necessary third aspect along extraterritoriality um, and, and present returns that they call it. And that they, this is how they allow us to rearticulate those terms and to, and to think about present return and future extraterritoriality. So um, in conclusion, um, I think that Hoffman, Bartanin, Bloom speculation are opening up a space to reflect to reflect a core issue in regard to the history, present, and of course the future of this land. Uh, what will happen if the um, if America will stop its support to to the states of Israel? Uh, what will happen if the Polish Jews will go back to Poland? Um, at the same time, those who can, we also need to take into consideration that those who can return to Europe are also the one who are still have a privilege to go back to Europe. So it's also kind of thinking about the exclusive privilege of those who have inflicted upon the Palestinian their catastrophe and also doing the, the Arab Jews, the Mizrahi, um, a life of oppression and discrimination. So a lot of issue we can take from, from that uh, project. Um, so like the final uh, uh, paragraph, I'm just saying that this work does not presume to offer one clear image of the future. Rather, these troubled and loaded imaginations makes temporary and questionable our present existence, bringing the issue of the Palestinian refugees and their return to the forefront. Um, thank you. <laughs>